Alright, welcome back. Last time... Um... What was again? Oh yeah, we went ahead and started passing a bunch of reforms which raised my provincial corruption through the roof. I passed, uh, I went for the spoil system. Irregular examinations, which was really hard. And higher through examinations. This, again, ridiculously raised my uh, provincial corruption temporarily. Though now it's going lower than ever, which is great. And he still evilized the country slightly. And I uh, trashed my treasury, so now I'm back to small levels of cash. I actually had to take out a loan from the burgers, and also had to increase my taxation quantity. And, well, at least in admin and diplo points. And I also had to lower manpower taxation, and I still seem to have just as much manpower as I did before. Yeah. Went to war with Iberia again, got more of South Africa, and the rest of Iberian Australia. Given time, I'll get full control of this place eventually. I just need to get England at some point, but for right now I don't really care. England seems to have stolen all of France's colonies on the long of the African coastline. Cool. Yeah. I am capable of embracing two institutions if it weren't for the fact that I lack the money to afford them. A meritocracy is, uh, well, okay. A bit questionable, I guess, admittedly. Well, industrialization has pretty much reached every province it can get to, so... I'll probably get that one first. Too many buffs to ignore. That's also part of the reason why I'm a little low on the great power rankings than I was previously. Still have pretty high dev, though. 31... Uh, 3100. Also, my colonies keep offering to share knowledge. If you haven't gotten your independence yet, why haven't then asking me for help isn't probably is probably not going to help much. Right, I'll go ahead and handle it now rather than later. Some taxes won't be high enough. Anyway. Shipbuilding cost minus 10%, recruitment time minus 10%, reinforce speed plus 10%, global ship repair plus 10%, infantry and artillery fire plus 0.5. And tech cost reduced by 70%. Well. Time to burn some points. Commission of National Education. Production efficiency plus 1%. Romanticism. Well, that was another idea group. Rifled carbons. Maneuver plus 5%, infantry fire plus 0.15, cavalry fire plus 0.2, artillery fire plus 0.5. Sextant. Naval force symbol plus 5%, may agitate for liberty, maximum wheel range plus 2. Clearing houses. Global ship trains. Trade power plus 3%, trade range plus 160, trade efficiency plus 1%. And merchant banks. Ship trade power plus 5%, trade range plus 100, set course plus 2, enables the heavy freight. We've got a lot of excess points. Um, let's see here. I think Empire Ideas would be best. Law and order. An empire is by definition the dominion of one people over others. What makes one cohesive, then, is not any natural bonds its population might share, but the visibility of that domain's benefits, and the subtlety of its downsides. National civil war strength minus 10, 15%, stability increase interval minus 10%. Exceptionalism. We are extraordinary in all things. In all affairs, we are central. 
The rules which bind others merely guide us, and the challenges which others face we shall never see. It is this fact that elevates us above all others and motivates our rulers to bring us closer to greatness. Elite Prestige plus 0.5. Internal Structure. Only weak and feeble powers hand away control to lesser domains within themselves. True empires impose themselves upon such powers, and ensure that all within understand that only from the basis of meeting their obligations to the larger realm may they exercise self-rule. Elite power from autonomy minus 10%, yearly centralism, centralization plus 0.1. Our justice. There is a natural order to things that we will not permit, only permit so much diversion from. To even threaten to depart from our way is to do wrong. In this, no power is sovereign but our own. Capital infrastructure cost minus 10%, harsh treatment cost minus 10%. Universal realm, what marks the proper borders of an empire. Not the presence of a different people, more of whom may always be brought into the fold. Nor is it a rival power, which exists to be encroached upon. No. By right of force and destiny, it is the empire which chooses where its borders lie, and no others. Bathing infrastructure cost minus 5%, monthly autonomy change minus 0.05. Well, monthly autonomy change. Opportunistic antagonism. An enemy can be just as valuable an asset as an ally. In managing hostilities with foreign powers, the objective is a good statesman. The objective of a good statesman is to make sure that enemies are simultaneously visible, tolerable, and negligible, maximizing the benefits any conflict might yield while minimizing the risks. Unjustified demands minus 10%. Uh, demands cost minus 10%, change travel cost minus 25%. And finally, one will. A ship only has one captain, and an empire can only truly have one state. Although we may permit our people their own affairs, even in some things, their own governments, when push comes to shove, there is no denying who grants these privileges and who can take them away. Corruption from local autonomy minus 5%, yearly legitimacy plus 0.05, enables the secret police. Thanks to a combination of espionage and empire. And as a finisher bonus, yearly corruption minus 0.1. National unrest minus 2. Ooh. I don't need police force all that much. Let's go to a secret police. Uh, I think I'll jump ahead and mill tech. Yeah, okay. Conscription. Enables him. Okay, so Glamour all plus 0.3, Combat Width plus 3, Shock plus 0.5, enables new infantry and artillery types. Triage! Battlefield surgery, and all that. Military tactics plus 0.75, Glamour all plus 0.3, Cavalry Shock plus 0.2, enables Lancers. That's the last of the cavalry. Um, our infantry isn't fully kitted out yet. Go with impulse infantry. Neither is artillery. In, uh, inventory is tech level 64, artillery is tech level 66. Right. England is no longer a valid rival. <laughs> Clipsed. Again. Right, time to take the ships out. I've got a decent number of coins on the areas that I would like to have, so... It's not like I can fabricate anything more due to lack of money, so... Arissa's not going to come help because of their sheer quantity of debt. Um, how fast does he... Tactics difference, my siege ability. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Already tactics difference and siege ability combined are more than 100%. Tack on the fact that I have a decent spy network and the defensiveness, local defensiveness, is pretty low. Yeah. They don't stand a chance. Status quo. Lasted 26 C stages. <laughs> C 
siege phases. So what do I have coins on? Well, I should probably just click the ones that I have coins on. I kind of need cash too, so war reps. Not one. Honestly, that's everything I want for now. It's not much. Because I've got interests elsewhere. This is mainly just to get me far more trade power in an area. to hit the limit on mill points. So, combine self-contained cartridges. Infantry fire plus point one, or cavalry fire plus point one. We definitely have the highest mill tech in the world. <laughs> so, yeah, that's not going to be an issue. Fine, I won't do that demand. Pick a smaller part. Well, that would have been not very helpful. Yeah, I think this is fine. Let's have that as a finisher piece deal.
Yeah, that's a good point to stop. Okay. No, oh, straight through there. Convenient. So, let me just uh, burn all the points necessary to core all of these recent conquests. Yeah, I've been a bit busy in Indonesia. Machapalit is no longer much of a power. And I've taken some provinces off of Malabar too. As well as Iberia. Iberia no longer has any provinces in southern Africa. Hoping to get England next. A few provinces off of them. It appears I can't fabricate any claims. Sad. But that's something for next time. I've embraced both institutions, so I think I will we'll just uh, reduce my admin taxation level. I can absolutely afford that. Probably. Yeah, perfect corruption is going down. and I mean, at the very most... At the very most, assuming I get zero money from Diplotax, which is ridiculous, that will drop it by 25%. Which I can still afford. <laughs> I can still afford that. 900 ducats a year? Well, I'm getting over 100 ducats a month, so... Yeah, it's not. It's a non-issue. Of course, with the recent integration of Manyika, they had very low state reach and a large quantity of tribals inside of their provinces, but... Hey, look, that's what Healy's doing. I'm also kind of hoping these revolutionaries uh, do their thing. So I'm just sitting there hoping they don't walk into any provinces with my own troops. not really a big deal. I've also been teching up and uh, I have so many mill points I don't really know what to do with them so I've just been advancing extra far in military technology so I am several I'm a couple levels ahead of everyone else. Hyperia is 60. <laughs> I'm not actually sure who has the furthest ahead mill tech. Okay someone has 61. It's Naples but I'm fairly certain no one has 62, otherwise my green wouldn't be so vibrant. Actually having starting to have issues with religious unity. Interesting. Oh yeah, I forgot to upgrade to uh, um, centralized military. There we go. Probably could have done that sooner, but... Maxed out. Huh. Maxed out army tradition. Interesting. That's not an accurate quantity. There we go. Yeah, I've been. I now need to start expanding the administration into these new areas. Which will not be the fastest thing. It's going to take a while, but slowly but surely, we'll get there. Also means I have near dominance over the Monomatapa ah, node, and therefore also have a good bit more power in the Central Africa node because of oh, downstream nodes generate a small amount of trade power, and upstream nodes at least trade power from those provinces. Yeah, I do want to get Moravia at some point, but they're allied to Rwanda. Which isn't as bad as it sounds, because I've been thinking about going against Rwanda soon anyway. Expanding Hadiyah's um, influence, well, territory again. It's been a long while since I've expanded them, so... I've just been sitting there. <laughs> yeah, and also filling in some of these provinces. I'll let them have the inter the entire the general interior because I don't need those provinces. <laughs> they're they're gonna be ridiculously hard to control. 
After all, I am... Most of my autonomy in, along the mainland relies on the fact that I am actually along a coastline, as is my capital, so... Anything that changes that is going to have... It's going to cause problems. Hopefully I can get the last reforms through, though. There is only 60 years left in the game, but it would be nice to get those. Oh, well, I'm going to need to get 80 average state reach. But once that's done, most of these are just... Yeah. Trivial. There's not really much else to say, so... I mean, Europe's a complete and utter mess, but what else is new? Bohemia now controls Lithuania and their names over there, which is wonderful. France is basically dead. Scandinavia now owns Normandy, and they are a republic for some reason. It's weird. First it's China, now it's Scandinavia. They're republics. What next? Okay, I don't see any weird republic. Well, isn't there a government type map mode? Local organizations. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Genoa Merchant Republic is to be expected. But apparently a bishopric is there. We've got uh, honest tribal governments in some areas. Okay, so the only weird ones are China and Scandinavia somehow becoming republics. Wait, who's that? Oh, that's just Scandinavian territory. Yeah. They've been conquering portions of Portugal off of France as well. I did say this world is rather weird with its governments. But anyway, I have gone on long enough. I'll see you again next time. Until then, bye.